Hi, I'm Brian, and I am talking about certainty. Chances are, if you're like most Americans, sometime in the past three months, you've gotten behind the wheel of your automobile, you've steered your car out onto the freeway, you've pressed the accelerator, and you've brought that car up to speeds of 60, 70, or upwards of 80 miles an hour, maybe more. Um, would you have done that if you were not certain that your brakes would work? The question here, though, is what is certainty? How do we understand certainty? Um, is it a black and white thinking? It's all or nothing? Well, really, no, it's not. See, how you have come to make decisions based on your brakes is based on past experience. They've worked for you in the past. You've used them in the past. You've driven the car before. You're familiar with the car. Maybe you've read the owner's manual and you've read how the brakes function. Maybe you have an advanced level of understanding on brakes and you understand how the hydraulics work and how the mechanisms work. Maybe you yourself have worked on the car, you've put brake pads on, you've done maintenance and you feel pretty comfortable about that. And maybe you're just stepping out on a little bit of faith. But the truth of the matter is you really don't know how well your brakes are going to work until they've already been applied because this next time could be the time they fail. You're still operating assuming that they will work. You've got some level of certainty because you see certainty is not an all or nothing, it's actually sort of a varying degree your a certain level of certainty. Now maybe if this is a car that you've never driven before and you actually haven't even used the brakes at all. Well your certainty level probably is a little lower than your certainty level of the car you've driven all the time and you've done all the work and you've done all the, the maintenance on and you know the car well. So if we were to take certainty and we were to put it on a scale from 1 to 10, 1 being really you have very little certainty at all, um, you're just hoping, to 10 you have some understanding of what you know and why you know it and you feel comfortable with that amount of evidence um, to the extent that there is no possibility you'll be wrong at 10. You examined all the evidence and you were 100% correct. Chances are with your brakes you're actually somewhere uh, you know over here, over here, somewhere in the middle um, because really you can't be a 10 with automobile brakes until you've already applied the brake and hopefully you're not driving a car and your certainty level with the brakes of that car are at a one. That would be really risky and dangerous. See, how we understand what we know is we take all the evidence in front of us and we give different pieces of evidence, different credibility. We allow some evidence to speak to us louder than other pieces of evidence. We assign a certain amount of um, trust in the various evidence that's laid out in front of us on the table. And then we take all of that information and we say, I'm such and such percent. I'm 10%, 30%, 80%, that's a similar to I'm a 1, a 2, a 3 on the scale, an 8. We take all of that and we say, this is how certain I am. Now, that's pretty normal. We do this every day to make decisions. This is how we function in life. It's a normal procedure of life and it's important that we recognize that we are not 100% certain or 0% certain. Chances are there's a huge degree in between. And truthfully, very few things are probably in the 100% certainty level. There are many times when we think we're right and we're wrong. Our perceptions are not exactly correct. Our observance of things is wrong. We've weighed the evidence incorrectly and, and there's a possibility we're going to be wrong. So when we see that level of certainty, that might be a 9 or a 9.5 or an 8 or something. But there is still that slight possibility that we could be wrong in quite a few things. The question though is, is this how you function and operate when dealing with religious uh, arguments, when dealing with matters of church doctrine, when dealing with matters of faith. When you've come to the Bible and you go, you know, how certain am I of the material in here? Well, chances are you're not going to be at a 10 for everything in here. In fact, very few things in here are even written in such a way that we come to a 10 in our understanding of God's Word. Um, if we're really going to be honest with ourselves and we're going to be humble about how we approach the Bible, we need to recognize there are some things that are not 100% clear, and we should be okay with that. Instead, it seems that we put everything into some category that makes it essential to salvation, and we argue like we are 100% sure. We need to be willing to be wrong in areas we're not positive. This is how we should come to understand our level of certainty. So now the question is, is this what you're doing as you approach the Bible? Are you humbly accepting that your level of certainty might not be uh, where it should be. And if you can honestly assess where you're at, that's okay. Um, I remember a story of some professors, we'll call them Professor A and Professor B. And 
Professor A was the leading uh, theologian on issues of end times in the Bible, and Professor B had a different position and opinion, and the two men go out to lunch, and, and Professor B asks Professor A to lay this whole thing out. So they have a two-hour discussion, and they bring in maybe diagrams on napkins, and they talk, and they converse, and Professor A spends all of this time presenting a position. Now, this is the issue that Professor A wrote his dissertation on, and he's written three or four books, and he goes to conferences, and he speaks, and he's a leading expert. When the conversation's all said and done, Professor B says, well, let me ask you this question. How certain are you? And Professor A says, you know, I think about a two, maybe a three. See, now that's the kind of honest humility we need when looking at some of these things. How certain can we be of end times matters? How certain can we be of the function of the early church? We can be certain on some things, and we can be very certain on other things. And we can be not so certain. The important thing is that we can honestly look at what we know, how we know it, and all of the evidence out in front of us, and we can assess honest levels of certainty. This will greatly shape the way we approach information. This will greatly shape the way we communicate with each other. So I would highly encourage you to take a look at some of the things that you feel really certain about and give them a number. Take some things that you're not so sure about and give those things a number. The next time you're in some kind of conversation that might be hotly debated or, or something that you... Uh, are passionate about but not 100% certain about, take a minute, pull back just a little bit and say, well, how certain am I? What's my certainty level? And it might actually be valuable to ask the person you're conversing with about their certainty level. To what extent are they willing to be wrong and to what extent have they weighed all of the evidence and they know there's no different position? Or maybe they're only at an 80%, maybe they're only at a 7 maybe their level of certainty is somewhere in the middle and not necessarily on the end. Thanks for your time.